Why don't you give me a sign? Like the sea that leaves a trail along that shore It's not your problem, it's mine Everybody thinks that I'm okay Sometimes I think I am too I'm on the outside looking in I'm waiting for the shockwaves to begin Oh, won't you let me hold you for one time Just a rainy day In a London cafe A London cafe Deer Creek International Business Solutions, how can I help you? I am ready. Well, that's great, Ladybug. Ladybug? Your new operational name? Oh, I see what you're doing. Ladybug's supposed to be lucky. Ha! You don't have bad luck. Really? Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica, and welcome to the Fan Carpet. When I read the script, like, every character had something going on. They had their own agenda, which means we're going to get a great cast, which means... At the end of the day, everyone gets the score. It is really, really funny. They are really, really funny. The prince is pretty awesome because when we first meet her, she really uses her innocent look and her schoolgirl looks to distract and disguise her evil mind. And she uses her manipulation to kind of orchestrate a lot of terrible stuff and loves it. The script, honestly. We got it from Sony for David to direct and... Um, I read it and it was just so wildly modern and original and you know David's the type of filmmaker who gets to do those shots and um, the trick was you know who plays Ladybug and um, that challenged us for a really long time and um, not, not that long actually but to the point where it was like do we go to Brad like that's a scary you know pursuit because he's so busy and um, you know we'd never gone to him before and it's like you know all this history and it's a little it, daunting and then he read it in a weekend and was like lychee I'm in and then it became a movie it was beautiful actually <laughs> it was really easy with these people I mean they're all professionals and um, it starts with Brad he's such a giving actor um, I think it's a um, always been a, a giving actor but you know his years in the business and um, working with the best he knows he's got to support the younger talent and and um, and lead from from example and um, he's so giving and he so sets it David as a director he fosters a really warm environment that uh, you know best idea wins and I think that allows them all to play in a way that you know kind of becomes a bit of magic well, it wasn't a lot of work, honestly. Uh, David put us together for a chemistry read. Um, I think Aaron was attached first, and then he asked me to come along. And he put us together in a room, and it was all downhill from there. No, it, <laughs> it was amazing, man. I mean, Aaron is such an amazing actor, man. He's a dreamboat. You can't deny him. He's like, he gives this rough exterior, but there's a gooey center in there that I'm able to, like, pull out. And, yeah. Uh, only, only you're allowed to see that, you I, see. Only that's only for you, that too. bro. Uh, but yeah, man, it, he's just a great guy to work with. Yeah, and I mean, likewise, it's very rare man. that you get that opportunity to, to play with someone like that. I think the originality of the film is really what's so unique about it. Right now, everything seems to be sequels and superheroes. And what's so exciting about Bullet Train is it's a big original entertainment, and yet it's really not, it's an original. And that's what's really so exciting about it. The essence of good action is uh, character, and I think um, you have to define the character in the action, and make sure that you're learning in sequence to sequence, and um, you know having them arc in those moments. I think this is a perfect example. Like every one of these um, characters, not only has a different style of fighting that defines who they are, but um, is dealing with different emotional um, journeys and um, stakes-driven journeys that are punctuated with the action. So um, without that action is meaningless really spectacle yeah trailer moment cool but um it doesn't drive the story forward i loved it i think it was, it's always so fun to play the villain because it's such a heightened version of reality yeah it probably like when you get older like, like it's just more fun man it's just more fun than like sobbing and moaning but uh um this one i read like in the heart of lockdown and it just made me laugh and i thought oh Thank God, this is what I need. 
I imagine a few other people are going to enjoy this too. There's some wonderful surprises that we're not going to reveal. Now you have to see the movie to see it. But when we read the script and there were all these wonderful little cameo roles and we started to dream about who we could get, the idea that Sandy Bullock or some of the other actors that appear in the film, movie stars also, all in the same movie was sort of just too delicious to, 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 to ignore. You know, their performances helped elevate it. You know, you've trapped to, um, in these movies that have such broad comedy, you still have to find those moments of pathos. And um, you look at Brian, uh, Tyree Henry, and Aaron Taylor Johnson, Joey King, like the level of talent we were playing with, like they could play the nuances and deliver real feels in the middle of this crazy movie. Yeah, I mean, I, the script was fantastic. And it's a, a lot of the reason why we ended up doing it and getting the cast that we got. But everybody, David brought it to the next level. He brought a lot of pathos, a lot of heart. He wanted to make sure that you connected to every character along the way in an emotional way. And it, um, I think that's probably what brought it to the next level. And then the players, starting with Brad, wanted to add comedy and wit and charm. And they did it in spades. And I think that combination is just lethal. So that we got out of the house. We got to make a movie like this that was incredible on the page. It was brilliantly written and directed um, and by David Lynch. and it was really, really fun to just like fight Brad Pitt every day. I think he's probably the premier action director working in Hollywood today and David has a really an amazing balance of original big screen action and comedy and you think about something like you know what he's done in the past with his films he's really a, one of those filmmakers that knows what it means to put a movie on the big screen so it's not a movie you should be seeing at home with this kind of action and the Japanese setting and the movie stars so I it's a uh, He's really the right guy to do uh, big event action movies today, no question. Oh my gosh, I'm a huge fan of his, I was an admirer of his work and then like, I didn't know who Tangerine was until Brian stepped into the shoes of Lemon and when he did, I knew it was just like instantaneously going to be magic and there was going to be a bond for life, I love this guy yeah. and I think we created something that we're really proud of, I mean this was, this was a lot of fun. I think the thing about Brad is that you don't see him do this very often. And so when he does, and you think back in his career, we worked with him last in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and he was so extraordinary in that film, and or maybe something like Mr. and Mrs. Smith years ago that he did, but this is really Brad doing what you people want to see him do. And, uh, uh, you know, he's also, he doesn't do that much. So when you get Brad, it's pretty exciting. <laughs> it, it, you know, I think Ladybug's, um, you know, power of luck is, um, is undeniable. So um, yeah, it might be, be really fun. Uh, be a really fun uh, fantasy, and uh, I'm sure they'll explore it uh, somewhere on the internet. <laughs> Go action comedy, yeah. But it's also original. So which is rare in the theater these days. It's not a franchise or anything. Well, it may be now, right? Right. Never mind. Never mind. I think movies have to be. Uh, worthy of it seeing in the cinema. And big screen entertainment is uh, hard to come by, especially one that's not based on pre-existing IP. So I think we're really hoping that people embrace its originality and it's uh, and because it, it isn't yet another sequel and superhero movie. And, and that's what makes it special for the summer, certainly. I like to mix it up, man. I, you know, I just, I love film, I love the shows. I, I like bouncing around between them all. Yeah. They have such an air of mystery. I love, I love how mysterious she is. I love how villainous and evil she is. Uh, just everything about her was super uh, intriguing to me. Knowing these two have such a strong bond and an empathy for one another. They don't have empathy for anybody else because yeah. they're psychopaths. <laughs> but they love each other, you know, and so there's this beautiful codependency that they have and this lovely, lovely sort of back and forth banter, like a yin and yang kind of vibe. Yeah. They're partners in crime. So when you see them sort of split up, you, you really want to root for them that they can get through get this together. train journey. Yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah. You, absolutely, man. I don't know if I want to work without him again. <laughs> Do I share it? Um, I, I hope I'm a little more grounded than, I, than our friend Ladybug, but he is on his mindfulness journey and uh, we wish him the best. Honestly, I do not know how to freaking lie to save my life. It is so embarrassing. Like, I I have given away birthday presents on accident because I can't keep it in. I'm like, like uh, I was getting my fiance a birthday present one time, and I was like looking at my phone. And he's like, "What are you doing?" I was like, 
Nothing. Like, I give myself away so quickly. So, no, even if I wanted to, I couldn't. I love the fight sequence these two did in the, in the quiet car, you know, and also it was one of the first action scenes we shot at the beginning of the movie, so they, they set the bar really high. Yeah. And uh, it comes across really brilliantly, man. Yeah, uh, my favorite was two things. I got to slap his head into a table, take after take. And um, I also got my nuts hit a bunch of times by Brad Pitt, which was actually not in the choreo. That was just his suggestion. Uh, but it was really good. It was really fun. He's one of the most generous actors to work with. And I, f I feel grateful to be able to do this with him. Nor got beaten up as much. The, the boys were like having far too much fun, I got to say. It's questionable. I didn't need to give him any tips, man. <laughs> All I wanted was dual citizenship. So if you guys can <laughs> give me that, then I, I think I can pass over here. That's great. Uh, no, I had a really great dialect coach. Jamison Bryant came on, was there every day, making sure I was doing my drills. I wanted to make sure it was as authentic as possible because I didn't want any of you meeting me in a corner somewhere being like you were shit. So I did everything I could, and I, I, and I love Lemon. He was on the page as being British, so I wanted to keep him that way. There's a few other surprises, like uh, some cameos that drop in it. And Sandy and I were able to like, you know, jump in each other's film, and that was really fun. That's I like this idea of cross pollinating it, each other's stuff. It, it's a really, it's a great community. A lot of us are friends, and just pulling together like, like I, I like this. So I want more of that. Yeah. Oh man, I don't know. I mean, man, my thing would be technology. So I'd like to like go through his phone so I can blackmail him at some point if you're oh! in the no, no, I don't know. I think he's his own superhero in his own way, and he brings that out of us in the film. And it's really great to be elevated by somebody like Brad. Man. It's really cool. I am so excited. I am so excited to see the movie, but I'm even more excited to finally see Brad Pitt. I think Brad Pitt is like a Chanel costume. He is just completely timeless and always works. Oh, yeah, he's fair. <laughs> Unreal. Honestly. Where is he? I know. Um, I mean, yeah, look at him. Ooh. Exactly, I'm not going to lie. I mean, if Angelina Jolie had him, I'll have him. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a Brad Pitt fan. I'm very excited for tonight. Looking forward to seeing what's in store. I love Seven Years in Tibet. And I love Rendezvous with Joe Black, obviously, which is actually, it's the German, that I just said the German name, which is Rendezvous mit Joe Black. Normally it's, it's meeting Joe Black, right? Or something like that. A bit of Troy as well. I mean, as you can see by like all the boys that I surround myself with, they all have blonde long hair. So tick, tick, tick. Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more content next time. What's happening to your face? Maybe there was a little head trauma? Maybe. I, I gotta get off this train. Sorry, buddy. on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.